If you'll turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3, we'll read verses 1 through verse 17. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able, for you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am a Paul, and another, I am a Paulus, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you beloved, by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered. But God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth in anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made known, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide with which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? The Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Paul here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 presents to us a vision of what God sees the people of the church. He see how God sees members of the body, how God sees uh, the church uh, from a physical point of view or making physical uh, references to how we are to be spiritually. And he begins here in verses 1 through verse 4 dealing with the fact that the the body is not to have division, that the body is supposed to be united. And that the body, in order to be united, must be thinking upon things that are spiritual in nature. That when the body began, that when the thoughts uh, turn to things of physical nature, carnal things, lustful things, when people start to seek their own desires and start to feel their own desires and start to seek their own uh, lust then the body isn't working as it all. He says, I could not speak unto you even unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Obviously here speaking to members of the church, babes in Christ, uh, though they should have been to a point in their lives where they were uh, more mature. And so we see here a reference to maturity as well. But he says, I fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither ye, yet now are ye able. So even though uh, the, the Bible provides for us nutrition as babes in Christ, there comes a time when that nutrition needs to be increased, that we need to, like a child, uh, grow, not just in, uh, in our physical stature, but grow in the things that we eat. The Bible provides for us the nutrition we need to grow uh, at every level of our maturity. But if we always uh, remain eating mi uh, milk or drinking milk, then we'll never grow to true maturity, which God here is seeking. 
Paul here is explaining to the church at Corinth that, they're, that they had come to a time when they needed to be moving on and not just drinking milk, because obviously uh, milk is good for the body, right? But not just drinking milk, but going on to further study and further growth and further maturity, and they were not yet able to bear it because they had not moved on to such maturity. And one of the reasons, verse 3, is they had remained carnal in their thinking. They weren't, by, they, weren't, uh, born, they weren't born in a carnal sense. It was that they had chosen to remain carnal. They had chosen to remain uh, in this state of thought. Perhaps that's what kept them from maturing as Christians. They thought that just drinking a little milk here and there would get them to the next stage or would get them to where God wanted them to be. Some people today want to want to uh, live on both sides of the track. They want to be, live for Jesus and claim to be a faithful Christian, but on the other hand, they want to live like they want to live and live with the rest of the folks in the world, carnally, if you will. And the Bible tells us that there comes a time when you have to uh, become an individual who can move on from the milk and move on to more mature things. And you can't do that if you're trying to hold on to that last grasp of the world. That has to be let go. And he says, when you think like that, when you think carnally, when you think uh, uh, based upon your own lust and your own desires, that's when things like envy and strife and division come up. And you start to act like individuals who are not Spiritual-minded, you act like those who are carnal-minded. And such divisions existed in the church at Corinth. He said, "Who then is Paul? Uh, for while one saith, I am a Paul, and another, I am a Paulus, are you not carnal? In other words, you're thinking from a, a, a physical, carnal standpoint. Obviously, Paul and Apollos were teaching the same doctrine. They were not divided." They were united in teaching the truth, just as Peter and all the other apostles were united on the day of Pentecost, as we read about in Acts chapter 2. And because of that united teaching, and because of the individuals hearing the same message in Acts chapter 2, we find that they all were with one accord at the end of that chapter. In Acts chapter 2, verse 43 through verse 47, they had all things common. They were all members of the body. They had all been saved from their past sins. And they were all walking in the light as we studied this morning in our Bible class. And so we see here a picture of children in a home needing maturity, needing to grow, needing to be nourished with milk, but on to further maturity with meat. Else we would see schism in the body or division in the body. Just as the natural body, the child, grows physically, we need to be growing spiritually. And we need not to remain a child spiritually our whole lives. He points out here the marks of maturity are the, that we move from milk to meat. That we think spiritual things rather than on the carnal things that, that, that can divide us. And in how we see ourselves do we see ourselves as of Paul or Apollos or do we see ourselves as one united body it's important uh, to see ourselves in that sense because uh, as Paul told Timothy in 1st Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15 he says if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. The Bible speaks of the church as a house, a household, a family. Obviously, as every family needs uh, parental guidance, we have God the Father to deliver that guidance. He has provided us with the meat, with the milk, with the nutrition that we need to grow. He has provided us with the... The, uh, the, the support system that we need in having brothers and sisters in Christ 
who have responsibilities. And people today look at the church, they have many misunderstandings about the church. And even inside the church, sometimes we, we forget our responsibilities, not just to God, but to one another. And I think in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul is trying to remind these individuals of their responsibilities in a meaty way. <laughs> because he's, uh, he's saying these things not explicitly, right? He's giving these things, uh, uh, explaining them by means of, of analogy. So that people can read these things and not just be told something, but to learn something, to make them think about how they are acting towards one another. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, later Paul refers to the church as the body. And you'll remember that uh, in this body, it's one body, verse 12, for as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. In other words, there's, there should be no one saying, I am of Paul or I, I am of Apollos. We're one body. Now, there are many members that make up that one body. And just as the church is seen as a family or a household with parental guidance, where, where God, our, our Father, provides us with milk and meat, uh, to provide that nourishment for us. Each individual family member now has a responsibility one to another. God has provided us with the ability to grow and to mature, but notice that each representative of the body, each member of the body, also has a responsibility. He says in verse 14, the body is not one member, but many members. That being the case, one body is not going to work if all the members are not working in the same fashion. If one member of the body chooses not to work, the whole body is not going to function as strongly as it could. You can't function as a body if one member chooses not to show up. If one member chooses not to be a part of the body, if one member chooses not to participate in the responsibilities. And that goes back to that idea of not being mature spiritually. They're thinking carnally. They're not thinking how I can help the body. They're thinking about self. They're thinking about their own desires and their own lust. And for that reason, the whole body can suffer because of the actions or inactions of one member of the body. And of course, here in 1 Corinthians 12, it goes through here to talk about there's not one member of the body in a physical body, the foot, the hand, the eye, the ear, that is any more important than another or less important than another. Some people might be able to say to themselves and, and think and convince themselves that my, whatever I could offer to the body won't be missed when I'm not there. But God said, the ear can't say that to the body. The eye can't say that to the body. The foot can't say that. You can't say that to the body. The body will feel your absence. And your absence shows that you're thinking carnally. That you've not matured spiritually. Verse 20, you are, now are they many members but one body? He, he keeps emphasizing this over and over. Many members, one body. Many members, one body. Then he says, after explaining that not any one part of the body is any more important or less important, that they're all equal, they all have a responsibility one to another. He says in verse 25 that there should be no schism or division in the body. That's what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Some were saying I'm of Paul. Some were saying I'm of Apollos. And that's only one aspect of division, right? Here in 1 Corinthians 12, he said there should be no division and there should be no schism in the body. Every member needs to be walking in the same path, in the same direction, with the same goals. And of course, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul gave that 
initial goal for the body, for the church to walk. Right? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. He says, I beseech you, brethren, obviously uh, referencing his brothers and sisters in Christ, re recognizing his responsibility to the body and theirs as brothers and sisters in Christ. He says, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together. Joined together as a family unit, right? Brothers and sisters in Christ, as a body, though there be one head, Jesus the Christ, and there be one body, there be many members, he said you need to be perfectly joined together. Now some people aren't joined. They've disjoined themselves. They've caused, and I tell you, when you have a disjoined body member, you know it, and it affects every other member. <laughs> You need there be no divisions that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So you need to be speaking the same things and you need to have the same goals and the same ideas. We have that in the Word of God. It tells us which direction we go. In other words, that's our parental guidance from the family standpoint. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we follow the same rule. We follow the same fatherly mandates. But when one brother or one sister stops following those mandates and stops doing their responsibility to the body, the body hurts. The body hurts. The body is disjoined. It's not perfectly joined together. Notice verse 26, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Well, what if one member suffers and the rest of the members don't even know there's suffering going on? Is that body joined together perfectly? Or when one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular, verse 27. Ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. So we see this family unit idea from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We see this bodily unit uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that very much goes along with the family unit, members in particular, brethren, brothers, sisters, following the, the pattern of God. And in verse 28, he continues this idea of the responsibilities. He said, God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, third teachers, after that, Miracles and gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. And of course, most of these refer to first century needs that the church at Corinth would have directly known and, and needed, right? Today, we have many of these things by means of the Word of God. Obviously, no apostles are alive today. All the apostles have finished their work. The prophets, in a sense of forth tellers, have all uh, finish their work there's nothing more to prophesy for the future other than what's been written down for us to know ahead we do have teachers still because those teachers teach what the apostles and prophets laid before us but the body needs all these things in order for it to be perfectly joined and when one member is not present, when one member is not participating, when one member is not responsible, the whole body hurts. And it's also possible, as we see in other, in other aspects of, of Scripture, that it's possible for a body member to be cumbered about with all sorts of carnal things that their spiritual things go undone. You know, in Luke chapter 10... Paul, uh, Jesus directly addresses this with a good, sincere individual, right? Luke chapter 10, verse 38, it, Jesus says, It came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. So Mary 
as Jesus comes into the house of Martha, seeks some spiritual nutrition, doesn't she? She says, I wanted to hear his word. But notice verse 40, we have the word but, which is a word that shows contrast. One woman, as Jesus enters into the home, sits at his feet to hear his word, to learn, to study. Right? When you say you sit at the feet of someone, you're talking about learning from someone. And she says, I wanted to hear his word, but Martha was cumbered about. There are many members today, perhaps, of the church who are cumbered about. They get a lot of things done, you know. They're cumbering all over the place. Monday through Friday, they get many things done, cumbering about. But what about Jesus? What about Mary? What about her sister? Right? What about the brothers and sisters in Christ? What about the other members of the body? Are they receiving any benefit from this? Martha was cumbered about, much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. In other words, Martha said, tell her to quit hearing the word of God and come cumber with me somewhere else. <laughs> and there are a lot of people doing that today. They got more important things to do. There's people today got more important things to do than to assemble with faithful Christians and worship God. And they're doing something, I don't know what it is, but they're cumbered about. And they're not helping the body, not one bit. And you know who else they're not helping? They're not helping themselves. They need to be sitting at the feet of Jesus hearing his word and they're, com and they're cumbered about doing something else. They're not helping the body. They're not perfectly joined together. And you know what the sad thing is? They don't even realize it. Could you imagine? She wouldn't have specifically gone up to Jesus and said, tell, tell my sister to quit listening to you. That's not what she thought she was saying, was it? <laughs> Jesus, tell my sister to quit learning from you. She's sitting at your feet a little too long. Mary, quit listening to the Lord. Get up. Come cumber with me. Right? She didn't even realize what she was saying. Notice what she said. Notice how she saw it. She was cumbered about much serving. <coughs> she saw herself as the servant. Well, I'm doing this. I'm taking care of this. I'm taking care of these people, this person. I'm taking care of things, right? They're not really taking care of anything. They may be getting some things done, but it ain't what needs to be done. They're cumbered. And she saw what her sister was doing is wrong. Should I do this all by myself? When one member of the body starts to think like that, how long would it take for that thinking to pass on to another member of the body? You need to quit. What You're not serving, right? You're not serving. So Jesus responds and says, Martha, Martha, thou art careful, careful and troubled about many things. In other words, you're con you have concern about a great deal of things. She wasn't an individual who was lazy, obviously. She wasn't an individual who, uh, who was not concerned about things. But what was she concerned about? And notice what she was missing because of what she was concerned about. One thing is needful, Jesus said, and Mary had chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. You know, you wonder if, if Mary was in need of something and Martha didn't even know it. So Mary went where she could find that need, find fulfillment to that need. She went to the spiritual, and Martha didn't even know Mary needed it. Why? Because she was cumbered about doing something else. And if each member of the body is out doing something of its own and not paying attention to others, it's possible that we can ignore needs inside our own family spiritually speaking, because we're cumbered about doing something of our own selves. 
And we just missed the need. Didn't even see it. Because we're careful and troubled about everything else. Now listen, there's a lot to be careful and troubled about in this world. <laughs> right? And that's one of the great things about having many members in one body, isn't it? Because uh, one member of the body can't do everything all the time. And so when uh, one member of the body or two members of the body are, are troubled with some other things that need to be taken care of, those other spiritual aspects or needs aren't undone. It's just somebody else takes up the slack, right? We help one another, right? But when members just go missing and all the work is left for everybody else to do, then that obviously causes problems. It causes problems for the missing body part because they're not receiving the familial relationship that they need. They're not receiving the spiritual nutrition that they need. They're not sitting at the feet of Jesus learning from him. They're cumbered about with something else. And when the time came for them to eat some meat, they couldn't do it. They couldn't bear it because they were still on milk. So they're missing out on the familial relationship. They're missing out on the, the, the perfectly joined body relationship. And they're, and they're neglecting responsibilities. Re, re, neglecting responsibilities. To themselves and to the other members. So it's important. As we see in 1 Corinthians chapter... Three. That we take heed to what we eat, to what we do, to what we say, right? That we recognize that we are not separate, that what we do affects others. And that effect can be positive or it could be negative. And that our responsibility to one another begins first with the responsibility to self. What am I eating? What am I thinking on? What things am I cumbered with? My time has run away, so I'll finish verses 5 through verse 17 this afternoon. Because Paul here not just refers to the church in, so, in a meaty way as a relationship between members, a familial relationship, a relationship of child to father, of child growing and maturing, but also as a, as a field, Paul said that we are his husbandry, God's husbandry. We see here the picture of a foundation and a building built upon that foundation. And then we see an allusion back to the Old Testament temple. A place of worship place of communion with God. All these things we see here as aspects of how God sees his people, of how God sees his church. A family, a unit, a body, all members working together, growing together, maturing together. Speaking the same things, being in the same mind, the same judgment. How do you do that? You have to be one. You have to be with one another. You have to be united with one another. You have to grow with one another. You have to ignore, you have to neglect the carnal and immerse yourself in spiritual. And so this afternoon we'll begin with that aspect of looking at the church from a standpoint of being planted with God, being planted with Christ, being planted with one another, and being God's husbandry, being a field. 
where we are to bring forth fruit. As all of these things challenge the church at Corinth <laughs> in a meaty way, right? He didn't explicitly state what <laughs> these things. He didn't put it out in two or th- he could have said all these things in two or three sentences. He wanted them to think. He wanted them to apply it to their lives. And as is it as this was challenging to the church at Corinth, I think God wants it to challenge us. Right? God wants it to challenge us. And all these things are challenging. These qualities that God calls upon for us are challenging. They challenge us to to look at ourselves in the mirror, to look at one another, to look at how our relationship with God affects others, to look at how our relationship with one another affects our relationship to others, to look to see if I am cumbered about with serving all sorts of carnal needs and not taking care of the spiritual needs and how that affects my family, spiritual and physical. But these qualities are not possessed in, one, in, in any one person perfectly, are they? And that's the reason we need many members in one body. But if all these things are possessed by all those who are seeking to do what God would have in some degree or another, we will perfectly join together and we will perform the duties that God would have for us to do as a church. And so we have to look to God. We have to dedicate ourselves to doing things God's way. And then we need to seek first to grow spiritually to mature spiritually, right? That's the first thing we talked about today. Then this afternoon, we'll fill in the other blanks of what we need to do, but we need to mature spiritually because if we don't mature spiritually, then we're always gonna, we're gonna stay where we are. So if these qualities intrigue us, then we're on the right path. And if it's our desire to engage in these processes and to participate in these processes and to be what God would have us to be as a church, as a body, then we are headed down the right path. God calls us through His Word. His Word tells us that we need to separate ourselves from the carnal thinking and to think spiritually and that... uh, we leave the world, the carnal world, the physical desires, and to seek to do things spiritually, right? We do that by hearing the Word of God and believing what it says, confessing that Jesus is the Christ, and being immersed in water to have our past sins washed away. God adds us to the church, His body, Acts 2, verse 47. And while in that body, we work as a unit, as a family, as a body, as a home, as a unit to serve God and to get to heaven. And that's why we're here this morning. And so any individual that wants to be a part of that unit, that body, that family, uh, by listening to God's word and obeying it, you too can be a member of that body. God will add you to the church, Acts 2 verse 47, and you will become a participant, a body part, a member of the church, a child of God, who can continue your life and service to God until Jesus returns or we pass from this life. And the reward is great. The reward is eternal life, a crown of life, Revelation 2 verse 10, to those who will hear his word, believe it, and obey it to the very end. The reward is worth it, everlasting life. But we need to begin that that passage to that next life today if we already haven't. So if you've not obeyed the gospel, the invitation is open. If you have obeyed those initial acts but have allowed yourself to be cumbered about with all manner of things except those things that can get you to heaven, then we're here to assist you, and we hope that you'll come now as we stand and sing. Lord.